You are a tiny little lap dog. You're so tiny. No, no, no. Daddy has to sit there. You have to sit there. That's your seat. That's daddy's seat. Lay down. <laughs> Lay down. Lay down. What is the dog doing here? Don't say her name. Let's Why not? Ref refer to her as our daughter because if you say her name, she gets really excited. Okay, but you've got to scoot that way because we're not centered in the frame. I've got a dinosaur butt to move. Ugh. Okay. Okay. Are we ready? I think so. Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 300 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com. That's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah, so welcome back to the couch, only it's a different couch. Yeah, a new couch. So we decided that... It's a beautiful night here in South Florida. It's about 68, 69 degrees. So we moved out here onto the patio. It is Saturday evening, which is very weird for us. And awesome. And awesome. But I worked a bunch of lacrosse games all day today. Came home. We filmed the Aldi's ice cream review. And you guys are going to be shocked by the results of that review. Um, if you haven't seen it, I'm going to leave a link for it right over Rachel's head. Definitely go check it out because it is a very shocking video. Yeah. So now I do want to say before we even get started, first of all, I've got to go turn that thing off. That smoker over there. It smells so good out here. Well, I'm smoking our dinner. Mm. You don't even know what it is. I don't know what it is. Is it good? It's a roast beef that I'm smoking and it's probably right at about 130 degrees right now. So what I wanted to say is we are out here on the patio. Um, we're wearing our microphones. Hopefully everything goes well with that. Um, but we do have, like, obviously neighbors. So hopefully it doesn't get too loud. If it does, we're going to apologize right off the start. Yeah. So how was your week? It was so good. I can't believe from Sunday night until Friday. Friday. We have no food to report. Yeah. Unfortunately, usually on Keto on the Couch, if you're new to our channel... We talk about some of the food we ate this week, but this past week, we did a 72-hour fast, which started last Sunday. It was supposed to end on Wednesday, and on Wednesday, I felt so good. I looked at Rachel, and I said, come on, let's see if you could make it till tomorrow, and I figured she was going to kill me, Yeah. and she was sort of okay. The only thing I don't think she liked was the shock of it. Yeah, because if I have in my mind, I'm getting food at this time, then it's like, we have to do it. So um, when I gave it another thought, I thought to myself, I do feel good. I right. feel great. Then the next day when he, he was talking about, all right, when are we going to break our fast? It was my idea then to go until Friday. Right. So, yeah. And we felt fantastic. It was great results, I think. And we were just so inspired by everybody who participated in this community fast. It was yeah. just awesome from people who just passed on breakfast and that was a, a new thing that they did to people who challenged themselves to um, drink black coffee instead right. of putting cream in, in, you know, different stuff in their coffee. Other people said, I'm not going to do snacks. Right. So, and then some people did 24 or 48 or even 72 hours. Yeah, and that was the whole goal, not necessarily to make the whole 72 hours, but to push yourself beyond your limits, beyond what you have done in the past. And so, like I was saying... I challenged Rachel to push us till Wednesday, till Thursday, especially because we weren't going to be able to eat until like nine o'clock at night, nine thirty at night, and I was like, I don't want to eat that late. And then midday on Thursday, I walk in all ready to go to Buffalo Wild Wings, and Rachel goes, "Hey, I, I, I want to go another day. I think I could go another day." And you know, it's so rewarding. There are, there's actually, and we talked about this in our live stream. There's actually serotonin and dopamine 
going into your brain when you set a goal for yourself and accomplish it. So if you're looking to build self-esteem, have a great day, set a small goal for yourself and accomplish it. Yeah. So we, our fast, our nice 72 hour fast ended up becoming 115 hours and 15 minutes. And honestly, I could have kept going. The only reason I decided to stop was I kind of had my heart set on wings. I knew I wouldn't be able to do wings on Saturday because right. honestly, if I was going to extend it, I couldn't have, I would have been able to, I guess we could have ended it today after my games, but I was Maybe. like, I don't know. Do I want to do four lacrosse games? I don't know what the temperature is going to be like. Turned out to be cool this morning. Um, but so we decided to end it, but I know I could have gone another day and I know the next time I do a really long fast, we may have to challenge ourselves to go longer because that was the whole goal was challenge yourselves. Well, we just took our longest 72 hour fast and turned it into 115 hours. So now we're going to have to at least make it 116, make it a total of five days. Even if we've got to push it at least to what? 120 hours. And what I was really excited about is how it sort of shrank my stomach as mm -hmm. far as what I could eat in a sitting. And I am not pushing it moving forward. If I can eat 10 wings in, in a sitting, I'm going to just stop at 10 wings. Now, we talked about that in our vlog. We did a vlog. Not a, We were supposed to vlog the entire fast. And the uh, first couple days, we didn't do so well with our caffeine withdrawal, Oof. which we'll talk about a little later. But um, we did vlog the day that we were supposed to end the fast and then us actually ending the fast. And we talked about that. And you had an incredible non-scale victory as a result of the fast with knowing when to stop. Yes. That is something that I have been really battling for as long as I can remember. Yeah. Now, if you haven't seen that video on us breaking the fast, we released it on Sunday, which is yesterday for you guys. I'm going to leave a link for it over Rachel's head, but I'm talking about the fact that we broke our fast with our bone broth. Mm -hmm. Okay. With, we have a bulletproof bone broth. Um, there's a link for that video down in the it's description. Tasty. I'm also going to have the a recipe that I personally use, which you can modify it. That'll be on our website. But after that, we got Buffalo Wild Wings. We each got, we got 50 wings. We were each supposed to eat 20 and then we were going to get five a piece today. Right. And I gave you your 20 and what happened? I ate 10 and I thought if I put one more bite in my mouth, I'm going to explode. And so when I did that, when I felt full, I just stopped. And that is something that is so foreign to me mm -hmm. because my thing is you make a happy plate. You eat all that you can eat, get it when you can get it. And it really has been a challenge my whole life not to overeat in a sitting. Well, I'm proud of you. I'm very I know proud. That, I know it was huge for you because you were looking at me like, how many wings did you give me? Like, did you give me all 25? And I'm like, nope, only gave you, actually I only gave you 18 because we had eaten two while they were warming up. So this has been a week of just learning that I do have the discipline that I need to achieve my goals. Right. I can do this. Is it difficult? Sometimes it's challenging. Life is challenging, but I can do it. I'm strong enough to do this and to make good choices every day. And I want to make good choices. So I like discovering that I'm not a victim to my mind and my emotions and my thoughts and my feelings. I really can make good choices for myself moving forward. So speaking of that fast, we actually have a giveaway from day two. Yes. Which I was talking to Julie from Redmond Real Salt and she was like, hey, let's give something away. Now, unfortunately, we're outside, so I left everything we're giving away. But I know we were giving away a 16 ounce bag or a refill bag of the um, kosher salt, yep. a refill bag of the fine regular table salt. Mm hmm a pack of the little portable shaker bottles, as well as a bag of the salt legs. Which is the funnest part. Yeah. So that was from, it was the day three video. And what we asked you to do is make sure you were like, and you went over to that video and you left a comment. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a winner. Screen record. I got to hit the screen recorder. I know. Is it recording? Yes, it is recording. Okay, ready? I already got the URL in here. I hit fetch. Anything goes. 
How many people? There are 105 unique comments. I love it. Okay, and we're gonna hit pick a winner. Pick a winner. The winner is Autumn Hayes. Autumn Hayes, congratulations. Autumn said, I just ordered the Redmond seasoning salt after watching your live last night. It will be here tomorrow. I've never tried any of the salts. I hope I win. I started my fast late and I am 30 hours in. Autumn, here's what you need to do. You need to send us an email at twocrazyketos at gmail.com with all of your shipping information. And as soon as we get that, we will contact Julie over at Redmond and they will ship it right out to you. And I do not think that she's going to be upset with her seasoning salt either. Now, you know what? Let me go grab some of that so I can show everybody what we're talking about. Okay. So this is the Real Salt Organic Season Salt. I'll show that to you guys. And this stuff is amazing. So good. Now, unfortunately, the only place I know that you can actually get this is on their website. But there is a link for it down in the description. And you can also use the coupon code 2 Crazy Ketos. I don't remember if that gets you 10 or 15% off. Uh, but this Something. stuff is amazing. And the funny part is, so the ingredients in this, we've talked about it before. It's dark out here. The ingredients in this are ancient sea, sal sea, ancient sea salt, which is real salt, organic garlic, onion, coriander, mustard, celery seed, black pepper, paprika, turmeric, and parsley, and all organic. I just didn't feel like reading organic, but it is amazing. A serving size is a quarter of a teaspoon. They say zero carbs. I'm always going to tell you count it as one you carb. You will swear that there's chicken stock in You're going to swear there's chicken stock in this. And so it's great during a fast. You can just put like a half a teaspoon in a nice big cup of water. You're, it feels like you're drinking a chicken broth, but you're not. So stinking good. It's great to season all your foods. If you used to like like the Lowry season salt, this stuff is amazing. This kicks its butt. It also makes just amazing broths. Like if you're making a bone broth, Put a couple of teaspoons of this yes. in there. It boosts it right up. And the best way to get it is in this big thing. They sell Cheaper. little refillable ones, but I would get the little refillable one and then get this one to refill it or just get this one. It's much cheaper. My mom came over this afternoon and I had her taste it for the first time. And she was like, all right, I'm going right home and I'm ordering a giant thing I of have it. a feeling I, we gave your mom some, I hope, because yes, otherwise we we're in trouble if we ate that much of it. She was like, I can't wait until it comes to my house. Yeah, it so. is amazing. I mean, it's, it's probably the only seasoning you will ever use when it comes to your cauliflower rice. You won't want anything else. This is perfect. And it's just got every good ingredient that Very you can clean. think of. Very so, clean. Yeah, so congratulations, Autumn. Now, speaking of other products, you picked up a product for us to review real quick. Aldi. Rachel had a good Aldi's haul this Stepping week. Stepping up their game. So I figured we can just do a little mini review here. This is Tillamook Country Smoker Zero Sugar Original Smoke Sauce. And this thought, is my jam. This is, Rachel knows me. This I is my favorite kind of thing. That Tillamook only did cheese. Yeah, I did too. So this is what it is. And their cheese is amazing, P.S. So on the back, I love these mini sausages. I like them even better than meat sticks because yeah. they're chewy. So on the back, it says slow smoked over real hardwood. These gourmet smoked sausages are packed with flavor. Nine grams of protein per serving, zero grams of sugar. They're perfect snack for the active lifestyle. It says in 1975, three Oregon families came together to create meat snacks of the highest quality. Today they're sold... Uh, they hold true to these same standards of excellence, and we proudly produce and package these sticks in the United States in Tillamook County, Oregon. So I like that. So the ingredients in these are beef and pork, pork broth, salt, cultured celery power, flavorings, uh, caraway seeds, granulated garlic, casing colored with caramel and carmine. I wish it wasn't caramel colored, but... No sugar, though. No sugar. No I'll take maltodextrin. That. No maltodextrin. Serving size is three sticks. That's, That's respectable. Nice Servings per container are four, 120 calories per stick, zero, uh, 10 grams of fat, nine grams of protein. So I like that good fat protein ratio. And at all these? Zero, oh my gosh, as soon as I rip that open, I got a woof. Ooh. Do you guys smell your food when you open it? Always. I was watching like, um, who was it? Christy Davis from the Keto Village and she was doing a review of that same nut granola that we love, the Keto, yeah. and that, that granola is and great. And she smelled it. And she smelled the bag and she was like, I always smell my food when I Gotta open it. Gotta smell so it. So do we. 
So yeah, these look amazing. And so, I want to say they were three ninety nine a bag. They, okay, they, good they, price. They may have been four ninety nine, but it's right in there. So this is one. So this would be a third of a serving. And so, a th so wait before a we lot. even eat this. So this would be what, um, one hundred and twenty calories. So forty calories. Forty calories. Right. So forty calories. It'd be about three grams of fat. A little bit over three and a half grams of fat. Three grams of protein. Zero carbs. Just if you have one. That's awesome. Wow. It's like the best slim gym you've ever had. Wow. It is so delicious and so flavorful. You know, we've talked a lot about these different meat sticks and how it'll be quote unquote original flavor, but they've had sugar and all kinds of wonky stuff in it. Yeah. This is the most delicious, plain, greasy deliciousness flavor. No sugar. They've accomplished it with no this sugar. Is the, the casing is very chewy. If you don't like meat sticks where the casing is chewy. I like it though. The casing is chewy. Uh, it does say after opening, keep this bag closed and refrigerated or use within three days. Um, very good. I'd give the cre ingredients like a B plus. Not giving it an A because it's not like grass fed meat and stuff like no, that. No, but. And it's got, nat it's got caramel coloring. But overall, of all of the products I think we've ever seen in a store, yeah, um, probably this is online with like the Epic, like, like yeah, something where all these you can get anywhere. It is very hard to find beef jerky and meat sticks that don't have sugars in them, that don't have carbohydrates, at this that don't price have garbage, point. and at this price point, when you consider again, love the meat sticks from F Bomb. Oh yeah, link down below. Oh, that's my favorite. And though. I love the Chomps beef sticks. Yep. Those Chomps beef sticks, they're $2 a piece. Here you're getting, how many are in here? There's there's four servings, so there's approximately 12, 12 meat sticks in here. So figure three of this is one Chomps. So you're now you're paying, um, 50, the comparison would be like, a, like if you were paying the $2 for the Chomps, it's like buy one, get one free. Easily. So very good, highly recommend these. So let's talk about the rest of our week. So. Lacrosse started this week. Are you tired? I'm not tired. So this was a light week. So I had one game on Tuesday. I had two games on Wednesday. Thursday I was off. Friday I was off. Today I had four games. Coming off of the fast, I felt really, really good. I did, um, on my way home, I stopped and I got us Tucker Dukes. Which, if you've got a Tucker Dukes near you, you get the Mondragon. Mondragon. Burger. It's really, really awesome. It's they easily take the bun off. Yeah, they'll they'll take the bun off. The only one they won't take the bun off, and I know not everybody has a Tucker Dukes, is you can't get the the, the Tucker, Tucker Burger. They yeah. won't change that at all. <laughs> but you just tell them no bun. I always tell them no bun, extra lettuce, because they they can't make it a wrap because they use like baby greens. Right. But I tell them extra lettuce. Like you had a nice amount of lettuce, right? It was felt, almost like a salad. Felt like a nice side salad. So. Uh, and then you tell them no bun, but it's a half pound burger with six slices of bacon, an egg on top, some che cheddar cheese. It tastes really good. I tell them to put their sauce on the side because yeah. I'll have a little bit of their sauce. Six slices of bacon? I, yeah, six slices of bacon. And then we came we – brought, I brought it home. We always like to eat at home. Yeah. And then um, we put one serving of our blue cheese dressing on top of that, which if you haven't seen that recipe, there's a link over Rachel's head – you like blue cheese, that's an amazing blue cheese dressing. It's such a good blue cheese. And it tastes better, though, the next day. It oh yeah, always... It's like keto chow. Yeah, it always tastes better the next day. So, yeah, we did that, and then after we're done filming this, we're going to have that. But I've got a lot of energy, but the real gauntlet for lacrosse is starting for me on Monday. So I have a game on Monday, two games on Tuesday, two games on Wednesday, a game on Thursday, uh, a huge game on Friday, and then five games on Saturday. So I'll see you in six weeks. I know. See you later, alligator. You also burnt your chest really good. Oh, Are you going to show I'm, them the, the birthmark you're working no, on now? No, it's really bad. Last day, or it, it, what was supposed to be the last day of our fast, I spilled hot water down my whole chest, and I learned very quickly, don't put something hot in a blender bottle. Yes. And I'm talking about the stainless steel blender bottle. Don't put something hot in there and then close it, because that's what I did. It will explode. Yeah. 
So what about your week? It's been awesome. I've had so much energy. I've gotten so much accomplished. Mm -hmm. And I feel really good about myself. I feel like I've got, you know, the keys I need to be successful going into next week. Right. So we mentioned it quickly on the vlog, like wrapping up the fast. So moving forward, are you doing the same thing as me as far as like what our plan with our food is? My plan is, yeah, either two meals or an OMAD. And I really tend to like the OMAD, but two meals are good too. A very closed eating window. Right. So, you know, today I, we're probably making an exception to that. But it's still not bad because we didn't eat until 4 o'clock. Yeah. And it's currently, what, 7.30? So we're going to eat in about a half hour? Right. But my goal is to have all my food eaten by 8 p.m. Okay. Yeah. That's my goal. So, yeah, my goal moving forward for at least the next two weeks is kind of like a little bit of an experiment is having that narrow eating window, changing it up every day. Uh, intermittent fasting four to five days a week and having most of my meals, I'm either going to eat two meals or one meal, trying to finishing up eating between eight and eight 30. Cause we have been like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock eaters. And I don't like that. And my plan is if I have a late day of games, like, you know, for example, on Wednesday, I probably won't be home until nine o'clock from my set of games. So I just won't eat dinner. So I may eat like I'll probably bring a keto brick with me because obviously I can't cook or anything like that. At can't a cook in your truck? So what I'll probably do is bring a keto brick with me. Couldn't you tailgate <laughs> the game? So can I finish? Sure. So I'll probably bring a keto brick with me and maybe I'll eat a quarter of the keto brick before the game or I'll have like a perfect keto bar. And then I'll eat maybe – there's no way I can eat that whole keto brick between games and still function. So maybe I'll eat like half of the keto brick in between games or after the second game. And so that'll be like a semi-fasting day. Like I'm not going to eat more than a thousand calories that day. And then what I'll do is on Wednesday or I'd rather on Thursday, I'll probably eat earlier in the day, maybe noon or have a, or have a very light breakfast, like maybe like a keto coffee or something like that. And that'll be the day where I don't where I have a wider eating window because again for me I want to change things up so that my body doesn't get accustomed to I want to be doing something different every day like OMAD one day two meals one day you know three meals one day but three tiny meals and my goal is to keep it super clean so and I'm going to keep it simple so that I'm not you know grazing around the kitchen when I'm cooking for myself yeah. while you're at games and stuff so it's going to be burger bacon eggs just simple right and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep it pretty clean. My exception for keeping it clean is going to be having a perfect keto bar. But even that is very clean. Yeah. And the the only thing that where we won't be clean is if we're doing any reviews. But we have done so many reviews over the last two weeks where we have a stockpile of videos. We may be releasing two videos a day a couple of times this week just because I don't want to have those things sit too long. It's not fair to the companies that ask us to review something. Right. There's also some that we feel are really important for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, but speaking of eating clean, okay. I did want to get this off my chest. So we reviewed the Aldi's bread the other day. And we got some angry We have gotten letters. some hate for that. You know, for that review, people saying that, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. And, you know, listen. We're not good people. We're, yeah. we're monsters. Here's here's the thing. We feel our job is to be as honest with you guys as we can. Yeah. The bottom line is eating keto. I mean, I always say there's no such thing as a keto product. But the basis behind keto is eliminating sugar and wheat and grains from your diet. Yeah. That bread is made with wheat. It's made with grains. My goal is to help people be as successful as possible mm -hmm. because I know what it does to me emotionally at my soul level right. to fail when I'm trying to have progress in my health. Right. It, it upsets me. Right. It it impacts how I am as a wife. It impacts how I as, am as a mom. It impacts my work. It it's like it consumes my thoughts when I am failing, although I am trying. Mm -hmm. So some of the products you're going to eat them 
and you're saying, well, it's better than what I used to eat, right? right? And so you're trying them and you're trying to do good in all the other things. But if it stalls you right. and it causes you not to have success, it's, it's going to hurt your feelings. Right. I mean, it just hurts your feelings. And I don't want hurt feelings to equal you you quitting altogether. Right. Because I've quit so many things, like so many different diets because of the failure. Right. And for me, it just comes down to it doesn't have good ingredients. Sorry, the cat has somehow found her way out here and was like wandering under the thing and the dog was like, I'm going to get her. Now she's over there and the dog's like, I'm going to get her. What are you doing over here? So what I just wanted to say is it, it comes down to like what Rachel's talking about you know, all of those different aspects, but it's also the ingredients for me. The ingredients play a big part for me. I mean, one person said like, what's the difference between this and having a keto treat? Mm -hmm. And for me, it comes down to ingredients. If you're eating a keto treat, either a store-bought one, like from say a good keto local bakery, where you should be looking at the ingredients that they're using, mm -hmm. or you know, maybe something from a reputable company that, you know, where the owner was keto and they're making it and selling it like the Nush Cakes or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or if you're making one for yourself, like a mug cake, you're looking at products like flaxseed, coconut flour, almond flour. These are good, healthy keto ingredients that aren't going to kick you out of ketosis, that don't right. contain grains, that are good for you, that have good fats in them, that kind of stuff. This is wheat. And it's, it not, it's not even one wheat, it's multiple wheat, it's grains, and then they're adding a bunch of fibers in there to counteract it. And I mean, it's, and it's basically like, is it better than regular wheat bread? Yes. It's still wheat bread. That's what it comes down to. It's wheat bread. I mean, you wouldn't ask an alcoholic or a recovering alcoholic and say to him, it's okay to have a light beer, right? Because right. it's still beer. This is still a wheat bread. For me, it's also, you can hear it in the question, what's the difference between this and a keto treat? This isn't a treat. You are going to handle a treat differently. You're going to approach it like dessert. This is something that you're probably going to incorporate into your meals. Every day. So that makes it more dangerous than a treat because right. you know I'm not supposed to eat cookies, you know, three times a day. Right. But you could eat bread three times a day. Yeah. And I hate to say this, if you really want bread, like personally, I don't miss bread. Once in a blue moon, I would like a bread with my burger. And even that, I really have learned to enjoy them without it. But if I really want one, I have a smart, smart bun. bun. Or I get the buns from Fox Hill Kitchens. Am I going to pay more money? Absolutely. I'm going to pay more money. Or I can make it myself. It, it, making it myself will probably cost me more money than buying that keto bread. But it's better ingredients. I know what I'm getting in it. Or you can even make a chaffle. Like Rachel is not a huge fan of chaffles. For me, I don't like them as a bread substitute. But I like the the mug breads. Yes. So those are some of your better options. It's just I'm telling you, for, you will do so much better if you stay away from most of these keto bread things. Those the chompies. I mean, we picked up a bag of the chompy chompies once, and we were like, I'm not even reviewing it. It's horrible. And we just want you to know we love you so much and we are never, you know, trying to take something away from people maliciously or be a De Debbie Downer or even be keto police. If you choose to eat it, we're still friends. Right. We love you. We're not you. keto police. It's just our job is to tell you this. People ask us, what do you think? This is what we think. Yeah. And we don't want to jeopardize our integrity to appease people and tell people like, hey, it's okay because we know it's going to make you feel better. Yeah. Do you want to get into some comments? Yes, please. So we've got a bunch of subscriber of the week. So actually two subscriber of the weeks. And then we also have some like updates kind of progress you know, reports. Progress reports. So we're going to go through these kind of quick. Um, one of them, this one, actually, I didn't even know what he looked like before because he's never put up a full story. Okay. But a very active subscriber, somebody who is active in all our live streams, which by the way, if you're new to our channel, we actually live stream every single Thursday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's supposed to be for an hour. It's normally closer to an hour and a half. Because we get excited. And we do try to get through all the comments. That's why it tends to go a little bit longer. But yeah, please come join us. The whole person at live stream is kind of just like 
answer your questions, say hi, check in. We, we like the fact that we can interact with you directly instead of just through comments. And this week, I believe Caleb, our son, will be a special guest. Yeah, so last week, if you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link for that over Rachel's head. But Anthony was a guest when people were asking him questions. This week is going to be Caleb, and we're going to have him kind of join us right away. And this way, you can kind of delay your regular questions and comments. We'll get through Caleb, and then you can do all your comments to make us go longer like you normally do. <laughs> Okay, so the first one, like I was saying, super proud of this guy. I never saw his before picture till now. And it's Christopher, also Slap known as Kino? Slap a Stick. And he just put, I was looking through some of my old YouTube videos last night, and I saw this. This is how big I was in March of 2018, and I just happened to be wearing this same shirt today. Oh, how awesome. And so that's what Christopher looked like. I don't think you've seen his before and after pictures. I have never seen your before and picture. take a look at what he looks like now. Christopher? Christopher, wow. Dude, it's time to get a new shirt. First of all, yeah, why do you still have that you shirt? You look completely different. Word of advice to anybody as you're losing weight on keto. You and need to keep one shirt. You keep one shirt yep. just so that you can do this kind of thing. But as you're dropping sizes, throw out your old clothes. I mean, and when I say by, by throwing out, go take Donate them to them. a thrift store. Go take them to Goodwill, give them away, but don't keep them in your closet. And here's why I'm going to tell you that. So long as they're there, they're a safety net. Yeah. But when you get rid of them, now when your, say, size 36 jeans gets tight or your size 14 pants gets tight, instead of going, well, I got a pair of 16s in the closet – you're like, I better get back on top of myself because I'm not going to buy more clothes unless it's a lower size. Well, for me, it's a little bit different. I want to get rid of mine because sometimes I don't have confidence in myself. Mm -hmm. And if I see those bigger clothes, I think to myself, yeah, even, you know, enjoy it while it lasts, Rachel, because you'll probably fail and you'll be back. And yeah. I remember going to the doctor and the doctor saying, like, great, you've lost the weight, but you are, you know, in the top one percentile of people that will totally gain all your weight I back and more. I will never forget that. And I wanted to go and slap that doctor. I'm like, are <laughs> you kidding? She lost a hundred pounds. And he looked at her and said, You're gonna fail. You're never gonna maintain this. And so that would I'm kind of go back to that doctor now and say, Ha! Hey. Um you Joe did not slap that man. Just, I, I wanted wanna, to. I just want to make that clear. I just I said I wanted to. Okay, yeah. Um, but I don't need any more like confidence kickers. Yeah. You even got rid of your period pants. I did get rid of my period pants. And what she just wears is like, you know, sweatpants or yoga pants during those days. Exactly. Well, you know, you've got one pair of pants that's like two sizes bigger than you need because, yeah, you just want to be comfortable during that one week, a, uh, you know, a month. But then my period pants would become uh, everyday pants. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I know it sounds mean, but get, get as you drop sizes, go donate those other clothes. And then, you know, if you're continuing to lose weight, go to the thrift store, get something in your yes. current size, but you're only going to pay a couple bucks. And then when you get to your final weight, then you can, you know, maybe have a goal set of clothes that you want to get at a regular store. Or you may be like me and just become obsessed with thrift stores because they're awesome. Or, and that just reminded me, we need to tomorrow after church, since we don't have to film Keto on the Couch, we need to run to Sears that, I don't know if Anthony told you, but the Sears in the mall is going out of business and everything's like 40 and 50% off. Man, Sears, what's happening? Okay. But Christopher, you're awesome. <laughs> Okay, so the next one is from Sarah. Sarah. Another update. Sarah Richwine. She said, just a pic of me and my 13-year-old wearing what were once my work pants. And it's her Together? and her daughter inside of the pair of pants. Yes. That is awesome. Is that, I remember you had that. You remember that? It we have a picture. If I can find it, I'll put it in here. Me and, uh, yeah. Uh, you and Caleb and, there's, and you wearing and Anthony. A, wearing a shirt. Wearing one of Rachel's jackets. You look awesome. You look incredible. That's awesome. What a victory. One more update. We've got Katrina, Katrina, who we got to meet last year at KetoCon. Beautiful, lovely Katrina. As a matter of fact, I think we even interviewed her. We did. Um, so, yeah, that I'll leave that one down below, the link for that down below. Uh, so she just wanted to put up some progress pictures of her reverse diet and then her cut. Uh, the picture on the left here, I'm putting them up here right now. 
uh, was taken September 2019. The one on the right is present. She's wearing the same exact clothes in oh, each picture. Oh, that helps. Oh, my gosh. Is that incredible? Wow. Did that, like, just absolutely you tone look her? awesome, you Katrina. You look wow. amazing. Great job. Hot mama. Okay. So we got two subscriber of the weeks. So if you're new to our channel, what we ask you guys to do, we have a Facebook family group. There's a link for it down in the description. There is almost 2,000 people now in that group. And people are in there sharing their stories, sharing coupons, recipes, deals, food ideas that they have. Sharing love. We ask you, you know, the only thing we ask you to do is please do not share other affiliate links in there. No keto police allowed. And if you do that, we're going to boot you or one of our moderators will boot you. That's right. And we ask you to just make sure you're always in there being positive for other people. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we ask you to go in there, put in your story, put up a couple pictures if you don't mind sharing it. If you don't have Facebook, you can email us at stories at twocrazyketos.com. And that story is going to inspire somebody. So It's going to resonate with someone. Someone is going to look at that and be like, Hey, I'm going through that. And if they can do it, I can do it. So yeah. it's really important to share our stories. So Melissa. Hey, Melissa. Put her story in there. And she said, Monday motivation. I started keto in October of 2019. I went to the doctor in May. The first picture here was taken in May. And that's this one here, Rachel. I was shocked when the scale said 210. I am now down 25 pounds. I did measurements two months ago, and I was down 13 inches. I need wow. to do those again. I have been able to cut my blood pressure meds in half and hoping to go completely off them soon. I feel great, and this page is so inspiring. You and there's her before and after. You are absolutely gorgeous, young lady. Gorgeous. Awesome. Oh, my goodness. Okay, fun fact. I'm wearing oh, wow. the shoes in the picture. You're wearing the same shoes in her after picture. We're shoe buddies. Okay. Last one is going to be Barb. Hey, Barb. Barb wrote, good morning, everyone. I'm going to put good Barb's morning. pictures up here. I've got my microphone between my legs. Uh, she said, the sun is shining even though the temps are freezing cold and the wind is blowing here in South Dakota. Ooh. It is a good day to be. I recently joined this wonderful community of supportive people, and I've really enjoyed reading everyone's posts. I've never posted before and after success, mostly because I didn't take before pictures I figured this would just be another weight loss attempt that wouldn't be successful, so why should I bother? And the now pictures, because I am not very adept at taking selfies with my phone or in the mirror. Neither am I. Yeah. I began my journey on March 28, 2019 with my highest weight of 205 pounds. By November, I lost 60 pounds at 146.7. Wow. I've maintained that weight loss through today. I have a few pounds to go. I am working to learn how to maintain the loss I have accomplished for a couple of months first. I'm attaching a before picture that was taken in May of 2018 at my mom's celebration of life. It was not my heaviness, probably 20 pounds lighter, uh, but it is the only picture I could find. The other two photos were taken today. I've lost many inches. Again, I didn't take beginning in, uh, measurements, but I've gone from a size XL, 1X top, and an 18 pant to a small medium top and a 6, 8 pant. Wow. I'm about to get weighed in early high school, 48 years ago or so. Oh my goodness. I'm encouraging each of you to continue on your keto journey. It can be done, even if you have not had success you wanted in the past. Please keep making great choices, and when you slip, hop back on and keep trying. One thing I've definitely learned that this is perseverance. It has been essential to my success. I love that. Thank you for encouraging everybody else. Okay, well, let me show you her before pictures. There's her before pictures, which she said, again, was 20 pounds lighter than what her heavy weight was. Beautiful face, And look at her afters. Oh, my great day, woman. I just love, love, love your attitude, Barb. I mean, first of all, I like your name because my mom's name is Barbara. Oh my gosh, you but look amazing. I love your attitude about being an encouragement. Again, that's the whole purpose of our Facebook yes. family group um, and inspiring people right there with your pictures, with, you know, don't give up. Thank you so much, Barb. I really hope to see you be a super active member in our group because, I mean, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. I do want to say one thing about maintenance, and this has been something on my mind. I know this, this is already down. becoming a longer keto on the couch than we want it to be, but there's Sorry. not as many comments today. Um, I have really begun to realize in my own personal journey, and I think this is good for everybody else as well, I don't think there's such thing as maintenance. 
I think you're either gaining or you're losing or you're always working to change and make things better. I but I think tweaking. when you get into this, I'm going to maintain. And again, I've experienced this. This isn't like preaching to someone. I, I'm experiencing this. I think you're experiencing this. Definitely. I think when you sit, when you get to the word maintenance, you, it kind of puts you into this into this mindset of I can I can let off the gas pedal a little bit. Now, Tabitha, we're not having that. There was somebody daring to walk a chihuahua by her house, but she's handled that. So what I was saying, I think when you, when you, when you put in your mindset maintenance, you're like, okay, I can ease up now. Yeah. And I don't think you can ever ease up. I think when you ease up is when you start slipping, as we did with too many keto treats, getting rid of the intermittent fasting, um, eating six, seven, eight times a day. And the next thing you know, you're starting to put weight back on. And now where you probably would have been eating a lot more calories or volume if you were sticking to one or two meals and your maintenance would have been just increasing the amount of food that you were eating. Yeah. Now all of a sudden you're you're down a slippery slope. Maybe I can introduce a few more carbs, that kind of thing. That word kind of makes me feel like I'm entitled to some bad behavior. Yes. <laughs> so I would just su always suggest for you as you reach, for everybody, as you reach your your goals – Start looking like, what can I tweak to make things better? Maybe slowly increasing the amount you eat, not a whole lot, because then you're going to see a weight gain. It may steady off, but, you know, if you're eating, say, an eight-ounce steak with dinner, maybe make it an eight-and-a-half ounce or a nine-ounce. Don't increase it drastically. Like, now we get double. Right. So, but I think that you're always going to be learning. You're always going to be adapting. And if we always have that mentality, I think you're going to have the most success. Yeah. Okay. So let's get into some comments. So I pulled some comments because again, some really good questions from Facebook group mm -hmm. and as well as from last week's Keto on the Couch. Generally, the way we get all our comments is from Keto on the Couch. We ask you to leave your comments and your questions down below, but last week there weren't a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't have a lot of talking subjects last week. So Forum Boys wrote. Hey, Forum Boys. So he wrote, love your videos, and I miss the daily videos. Oh, like when we live streamed? Uh, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about with daily videos. Are you talking about our daily live streams? I mean, this week we live streamed over here almost every day. Yeah. Uh, we do try to post a video at least five a week. A lot of times we do seven videos in a week. It's just sometimes the times are different because I'm trying to get better at sleeping. And so whereas I used to stay up till 3 in the morning editing a video to get it up at 7 or 8 in the morning, my new attitude is if I didn't get it done at night, that video may not go up till noon. Right. But I think it's better for my health. Until we could make this a full-time job, I've just – I've got to do that. It's better for our sanity. Yeah. And our marriage. <laughs> and our marriage, yeah. So Charlie wrote. Hey, Charlie. Rachel, your t-shirt says, ask me how to be super. So, okay, how do I be super? <laughs> oh, yeah, I had a tag on. That yes. was from church. Uh, join the Coastal Kids Serve Team. That's how you can be super. <laughs> I was trying to attract some new volunteers because you always need a bunch of volunteers. We, we have about 100 spots that need to be filled every, every single, single week. Weekend by volunteers in our kids ministry. So if you, you know, wherever your local, you know, church, temple, animal shelter, wherever, wherever is local to you and passionate to you, get involved. Yeah. And they need your help. If you do go to church or temple or anything like that, any place where there is a children's program and they ask for volunteers, understand the amount of volunteers it takes to pull that off. Like Rachel said, to run our children's ministry in our church. And a lot of people don't know. People have asked, like, what do you guys do? We run multiple jobs. That was one of our comments this week. Rachel, we both run the children's ministry in our church. It's supposed to be a part-time job, but it, it really is. It's always full-time, no matter who's running We're it. We're super passionate about it. Um, Rachel also does shipping for her brother's online comic book business, but that's at home. Mm -hmm. So we get to kind of, whenever the shipping shows up, she's doing that. I do landscaping. I'm also a high school football and obviously at this time of the year, lacrosse official. So we are pretty, pretty busy. But what I was saying, if, yeah, if, if you attend one of those, you know, a church or a synagogue or anything like that and they have a volunteer, it takes a lot of people. Like Rachel's saying, it really takes about 120 people in our church per weekend to pull off children's ministry effectively and have enough volunteers for it to be safe. Well, that's like 
10% of the people attending the church. <laughs> we need them Like too. we need 10% of the church to volunteer every week. Yeah. So, I mean, that just shows you the need in all of the different churches and synagogues. And, you know, anytime you volunteer, you wind up... You feel up, great about yourself. Well, you wind up getting more blessed than, than the people and animals that you serve even. I mean, you think, wow, I'm going to make a difference. And you do. You absolutely do. But there's something just magical that happens. Oh, like if you go to a homeless shelter and just handing out food. Senior I mean, center. Yes. Okay, so next one is Jolie. Hey, Jolie. Jolie wrote... Uh, Joe, I had no idea that you used to use a scooter or a wheelchair pre-keto. Wow, look at you now. Yes, Rachel, the instant hangry story. I can relate to. I don't miss that. It was embarrassing knowing that my family could see that behavior. You know, yes, Joe actually did use a wheelchair and a scooter. And right before Omaha, we were finally able to get rid of his cane. Yeah. Throw it out. So, yeah, if you're new to our channel, I have a severe injury to my left ankle. Um, it's actually 30 years ago this June. I shattered my ankle in multiple places. I spent two years on crutches. The doctors told me I would never walk again. I did finally walk, but I'd lost all the blood supply to the bone. Um, they wanted me to fuse it. I refused to fuse it. So I've always walked with a limp. So sometimes you're going to see me like walking in our vlogs. I do walk with a limp, but I don't have pain. For 27 or 28 years, I have had excruciating pain where I had to take arthritis medications and sometimes take a painkiller. And it's been horrible. And when we would go to theme parks, I could not make it through a theme park without a motorized scooter. As a matter of fact, our honeymoon... And Rachel actually had to push me in a wheelchair. Yeah. And a lot of we have a lot of new subscribers. If you um, are new to our channel, we do have, I will leave a link for it down below. I'll try to put it in the cards, but I, we may be out of spots. You can only put so many videos in the cards. Um, but we do have a whole video on our story, like our weight loss journey, because we were fat. We were both obese. We've lost 200 pounds between the two of us. Yeah, it was funny. Some of the things that came back about the bread was like, you don't know what it's like to yeah. be heavy. And but we're like, we, we do. do. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I spent a lot of years in that scooter and stuff. So the fact that I can now go to theme parks and now we've now done it twice, walk over 10 miles and not be in any pain, it, it is amazing. And it's one of the main reasons that I stay keto. To God be the glory. So Janice wrote. Hey, Janice. Does your salt block turn black after you've licked it for a while? So the black that is in the salt block, so if you get the salt licks from uh, Real Salt, um, now there's a link for them down below, which the only place you can get them is directly from their website right now. Uh, you're going to see some of them are clear, some of them are speckled, some of them have some clay in them because they, they're literally pulling them from the underground ancient mine, chipping off a piece and giving it to you. It's beautiful. They're like quartz. Yes. The black that's in there is manganese. It's a mineral. So you can kind of lick it. You can chip it, chip it out. I actually take it and try to lick it out. You're getting sodium and then you're going to get some manganese into your diet. I kind of like it, yeah. Even the clay. I don't even mind the clay so much. I'll Me get either. like little pieces of clay and I'll kind of lick around it. Or like when, I, when it, it gets exposed, I'll kind of pick it off with my fingernail or something like that. I like it. Vicky wrote, this one's hey, from Facebook group. She said, help me understand the glucose thing. Last night I tested my glucose. It was 74. I've never had a 74. It's the lowest I've ever been. It was in the low 80s. This morning at 4.30 a.m. I checked it. It's 84. Okay, dawn effect. I get it. Just before I break my fast, it was 93 at 37 hours fasted. Usually my glucose is in the low 90s unless I'm on a 16-8 fast. Why would it have gone up so high uh, totally fasted? Okay, so uh, you said you got up at 4.30 a.m. and you checked that it was 84 dawn effect. That's probably not even a dawn effect. Dawn effect usually happens somewhere around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning. So I don't know what time you normally get up, but if you're saying you checked it at 4.30, I don't know if you were just kind of getting up, going to the restroom, something like that, your body's going to create some glucose to give you some energy to get you going. So the body will, when you burn glucose, glucose is always the quickest, most available form of energy. So, you know, think about when you would eat sugar, it was like instant energy, right? right. Let's say you have to run away from a tiger. The best thing, I know I it sounds that, silly. I hope that never happens to her. So 
your body wants to give you instant energy so that you can get away from that tiger. Yeah. You don't want it to like give you the energy when you start running. You want it to give you the energy as soon as you see that tiger and go, "Uh uh-oh, I got to get away from that tiger. You want a quick response. So it's going to create the glucose for you. This is not a thing of you ate too much protein. No matter what, if you don't have enough protein, your body's just going to take your muscle and do it. Your body creates the glucose that you need, which is why carbohydrates are not essential. You don't need to take them. Your brain does need a little bit of glucose, but it could make that glucose. Right. So with that being said, this, the 84 was probably just the act of you getting up. And I'm wearing that CGM still. I have this one here. And I actually just got a prescription from Dr. Sivas for the really expensive one, the Dexcom uh, G6. And Fancy just because pants. I want to see the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things I've learned is it is amazing to watch your glucose. So I one day was laying in bed. It was like 78, 80. I got up to go to the bathroom at 3 o'clock in the morning. I checked it as soon as I opened my eyes because, again, curiosity. That's why I'm using this thing. Killed the cat. Um, It was like 75 or 80. I got up. I went to the bathroom. I peed. I came back. I laid back in bed. I checked it. It was over 100. Wow. So I didn't eat. I didn't do anything. What happened? My body created the glucose because it was the middle of the night and like, hey, I need to create energy so this guy can go pee. And I've seen the same thing with bending down to tie my shoes. If you get stressed, if you get super stressed, you're going to see your glucose level go up. Yeah. It, and it's, it's perfectly fine. What you would really want to, like I can look at that with my glucose monitor. Sometimes I'll check it. It'll be like 110, 120. But if I look at long term throughout the day, it'll give me a graph. And it's pretty much always in the 80s. Right. So it, I don't worry about it too much. That's why you would look at like, Look at the regular levels. If you're really interested in seeing that, ask your doctor for a CGM. Just play with it for a couple months. If you if your insurance won't pay for it at all, I think it's like seventy five dollars. You can pay seventy five dollars for a twenty eight day thing. If you don't have insurance, you call up Abbott and they'll give you a coupon for it. Yeah. Go to your doc. You have to have a prescription for it. You just go to your doctor and say I want it. If the doctor says no, if he says no, I'm not giving you that. You don't have diabetes. Here's what you say to him. This is a great, great advice for anybody. I got this from Dr. Barry. You go to your doctor, say, I want a CGM. If they say no, say, okay, I would like you to notate my medical chart that I have asked you for a CGM so that I could learn my glucose levels and prevent myself from getting diabetes. Mm-hmm. I want you to notate in the account that you've You're denied no. me. Watch how fast they will write that prescription You'll for get you. that prescription. Because basically what you're saying is, I've asked you to give me a way to prevent diabetes. You said no. So when I get diabetes, I'm suing you. Woo. That's how quickly they will write that prescription. And that, was again, a, that was a doctor's advice. I My insurance is paying half of it. And I think that even at full price, it's the, if you wear it for, for 28 days, get, get 20, one supply of it. It'll be the best knowledge you can learn for yourself. Yeah. Because you can really see where's your blood glucose level stay, what elevates it? I've learned what elevates it like stress. I, I've learned like if I drink something really hot, it elevates my glucose level. I've learned what lowers it. So just kind of sitting down and praying will actually lower my glucose. And so you change your priorities. Yeah. Because you're like, I want to control this. So I'm going to make the time to stress less and pray more probably. Yeah. <laughs> so long story short, It's your body creating fuel because it didn't have something somewhere. Right. Especially when you're fasting. When you're fasting, it's primarily working off of fat, but sometimes it needs that glucose because your body does need some glucose, but it doesn't need to ingest it. Right. And so it's going to create during the different parts of the day. So Shelly wrote, Hey Shelly. I love seeing your Instagram posts while I'm at work. I can't watch your YouTube, but I scroll through Instagram. Your inspiring fasting post today brought me some cheer. Awesome, Shelly. Yeah, so we have been trying to post a lot of our food on Instagram. Rachel's been trying to do Instagram stories. So if you're not following us, head over to Instagram. We're trying to get to 10,000 followers so we can do like the swipe up and stuff. Yeah, so help us out with that. Recommend us, pass us along, you know, help us grow that Instagram. Maybe we should start doing giveaways on Instagram. Yes. 
maybe this week, go follow us on Instagram. Maybe we'll do a Keto Chow giveaway. I think I have a bundle that we can give away, but it'll be exclusively on Instagram. I, like I think we have it. a gourmet bundle in the cabinet. Gourmet. So Tanisha wrote, Hey Tanisha. I like the idea of having talking points in the What I Eat in a Day videos. I also enjoy the food pictures on Instagram. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So we have been changing up our full day of eatings and trying to have a talking point. So I'm glad you guys want that because we're yeah. enjoying doing that. We're looking at changing a few things up with the channel, maybe changing up our intro a little bit. So let us know what you think about us changing up the intros and stuff. And what down should below. we change? Um, I can't change my face, though. You can't change your face. Yeah, and, and Joe can't grow hair. So one of the questions we asked about redoing some of our original videos that are really cringy with horrible lighting and I'm all pink and don't know what I'm doing on camera. Yellow background. So Rachel said, I would love hey, to Rachel. see a new Mitza video. Okay. I love seeing keto recipes. Rachel's antics waiting for the dragon to breathe fire video cracked me up so much. And you did go home to tons of Amazon packages. We did. I always love to hear inspirational stories. It keeps putting the why back into doing keto. Awesome. I love you both and have a beautiful day. We love you so much too, Rachel. Okay. Sorry. We had to change the battery in the camera. How to know when you've talked too long. <laughs> Boomer wrote. Hey, Boomer. Joe made Rachel blush. Rachel, you are so sticking cute, all red faced and tears in your eyes. I love the way you two look at each other. You have a very special relationship. Please never lose that. God bless y'all. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Man, I appreciate that. So this one's from Facebook. Eileen wrote. Hi, Eileen. Is it bizarre that what I'm looking forward to most about ending my fast is being able to drink something other than water, coffee, and green tea? No, that is not bizarre at all. No, it definitely isn't. As a matter of fact, what we did was at the end of the 72 hours, our deal was we were going to continue on for another day and then ending up being another two days. So long as Rachel could then have coffee and I would have a soda or something other than water. And as soon as I got something else, I was like, I don't need food. I'm yeah. starting to rain. So hopefully that doesn't come through in the audio. Yeah, so definitely not weird at all. So Eileen also wrote, Rachel, you really need to see this. If you're looking for health benefits from fasting, you don't have to go through the caffeine withdrawal headache. Caffeine can actually help. And she linked a video from Thomas DeLawler talking about coffee on fasting. Such an awesome video. I love that. I was just with this fast trying to push myself to do something I hadn't done before, which was fast without the coffee. But yeah, from now on, Coffee in a fast. Yeah, I, I, we've both seen those videos, his video, and even Dr. Barry has talked about it, you know, and yeah, the caffeine can help on a limited basis, but both of us are severe, severe caffeine addicts, so I think it's a good place to at least cut it back a little bit, so our next fast will probably continue to have some coffee, but not our normal amount of coffee, maybe just a little bit so that we don't have those major headaches. It's not the headaches. And so that you can get some benefits because, again, we talk about, people say everything in moderation. Don't tell an addict you can have as much as you want. Because I will because, get as much as I want yeah. of that thing. And when you say, you know, when Thomas DeLawler says, like, you can have coffee, he's not talking about three pots a day. Is he not? <laughs> I don't know. I think he is. You know, when you look at, you know, diet soda, is it, I mean, take out a couple of the ingredients and aspartame being bad and stuff like that. If you say, well, okay, diet soda is not bad. Yeah. When you drink one or two cans. He was drinking 120 ounces. But when you're drinking ounces. 128 ounces while you're on the road and then coming home and drinking two more cans, that's, that's not good. That's not what they're talking so, about. So yeah, don't ever tell an addict you can have something unlimited. That's, come on, the bottom line, that's why Weight Watchers doesn't work. This is zero point. Oh, really? So that means I can eat a thousand of them. Because I will. <laughs> Jennifer wrote. Hey, Jennifer. My honest review of Built Bars. I love them. They are amazing. They don't taste like other protein bars. They're very chewy. They taste like a candy bar. But here's the problem. They really do taste like a candy bar. I want to eat them all the time. They are a trigger food for me, and I haven't felt this way since I started keto five months ago. So even though they are amazing, I can't have them in my house. The Built Bars that we have in our house is on a shelf so high I can't reach it even with the stepladder. And that is on purpose because yeah. I have the same problem with them. Built Bars are delicious, but I can't help myself from eating the entire box. Yeah, when we got those Built Bars, 
And this isn't throwing Rachel under the bus. I want to make that clear right now. Because somebody's going to say, Joe, you're being so mean to Rachel. No. We got two boxes. It's true. We each had a box. 90% of my box is still on the shelf. Rachel finished her box. Almost immediately. But and it's not a bad thing. It's not picking on Rachel. It, it helped her realize, like, this is an issue for me. They really do taste too much like a candy bar. They're too good. <laughs> and again, like in everything in moderation, once a week. Once every couple weeks. Don't eat them every day. It be, and more than anything, like she's saying, like you're saying, it's a trigger of food. I think sometimes, you know, we talk about, you see people say, well, you know, I see different YouTubers will go to the store and they'll buy a Quest bar or they'll buy, a, not a Built Bar because they're not sold in stores, but a different type of keto-friendly bar. And I've seen people in their comment section say, well, you should buy a whole case of them. Sometimes it's better to just go pay the extra money and buy them one at a time because yeah. when you have a whole case of them, I will eat a whole case you of eat them. the whole case. But if you have to physically go to the store and pay more money for them and make that trip, it's a little bit less difficult to overeat them. And, you know, everybody has their own individual hangups. Joe has hangups. That's just not his hangup. Like, my hangup is nuts. Like nuts for me, like, and I, I used to store them in my car and I've learned I can't have nuts because if I will have, I can do one serving, but I'm going to do one serving every time I open up my center console. Yeah. Every time I open up my cabinet and I like the better nuts. I, my favorite nut is a peeling nut. Well, I'm never eating one serving of peeling nuts. My next favorite nut is Brazil nuts. Yeah. Well, do you know that nine, just nine Brazil nuts is 200 calories. That's a serving. Low carb. I don't think there's ever been a day when I had Brazil nuts that I ate any less than 50 Brazil nuts. My advice would be to, if you're a nut person like like we are and, and, and we can be really bad with nuts, buy nuts in the shell. We're doing a video on this. And crack them open. Yeah. And if you have to work for stuff, it takes you longer at least to eat them. I need to pace myself. Yeah. Like pistachios are not the greatest keto nut. No. But at least it takes you time to open them. Thomas DeLaller talks about that all the time. Yeah. If, if you need a nut really badly, you're better, even though they're higher in carbs, eat pistachios, because not shelled ones. You have to get the ones that are in the shell. In you the have to shell. Pull it you like pecans? Go buy some pecans in the shell and sit in front of your TV and crack them open. Same thing with walnuts. Yeah. Get the walnuts in the shell, get a cracker. Th then you got to work for it. You're going to eat a lot less. It'll at least slow you down. So Yeah. I am proud of you, by the way, for recognizing it's a trigger food and getting it out of your house. Absolutely. Steph wrote. Hey, Steph. I am spot on with both of you. Just because it fits, do I really want that in my body? So many times I've seen products that, yeah, while the macros will work, the ingredients just won't. And do I want to chance that it's going to satisfy my hunger and not trigger any cravings? I have come too far to play Russian roulette with my health, my body, or my mental hunger to possibly sabotage myself like that. When in doubt, throw it out. Thank you so much for a positive comment. I assume that was on the bread review. Thank you. We really needed that. So Jolie wrote. Hey, Jolie. LOL, a law firm in your head arguing a case of why to eat sweets. You're hilarious. Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> Jackie wrote. Hey, Jackie. I totally agree with no cheat days. My daughter just had our first grandbaby, and I've been doing a lot of cheating. Long story short, it's made the 72-hour fast really hard because I've been kicked out of ketosis. I did a 72-hour fast with Dr. Barry at the beginning of January and wasn't hungry at all. This time I've been starving since hour 18. Well, first of all, congratulations having a grandbaby. That is so, so exciting. I'm sorry that this fast was tougher because of that, but that's great. You're back on the wagon and we're rolling. Yep. So keeping it simple keto with Barbara. Hey, Barb. My brother's been keto since January 20th with a little push for me. 
He is a diabetic and has not needed to take any insulin since February 13th. Wow. His highest glucose reading has been 137, which is great for a diabetic. Yeah. I know this is not typical and it is so hard for me to believe, but his body is healing itself. Praise God. He's also 68 years old and the doctor told him his pancreas was not working and never would. Doctors need to get on board with keto. I should also tell you he was using a Nova Log with his every meal and Lantus first thing every morning. He is so happy and he has so much energy. It is unbelievable. I am so happy for you guys. What a precious relationship. Thanks for being a good sis and, you know, sharing keto with him and probably giving him a few nudges. It's not easy to start this off, but I am so glad that you kind of leveraged your relationship in order to, to get him on track to better health. And I am so tickled that you guys are going to have a, a nice long life together. Yeah. So last one, Jen wrote, Hey Jen. Hey guys, something in this video really resonated with me. I don't remember who had the non-scale victory of stopping eating when they were full rather than finishing their plate, but they really hit a chord with me. I grew up as a member of the clean plate club and it's a membership I need to drop. No matter how little is left on my plate or no matter how good the food is, I need to stop when I'm full. Thank you to the person who posted about it. This is now the thing I'm going to focus on and it is what I believe is the missing link in my weight loss journey. Thank you to Crazy Keto's family for continuing to share and inspire. They are right. You never know what part of your journey is going to be the spark that somebody else needs to ignite their journey. Jen, thank you so much for this comment because I think people need encouragement to share their story. And they need to hear it from other people other than us, you know. Yeah. No victory is too small to share. Your story, though you may think, I'm the only person struggling with this, share your struggle because there's absolutely somebody that's dealing with that same specific issue and will be blessed by your commentary. And P.S. Jen, I was president of the Clean Your Plate Club, chapter Coconut Creek, Florida. I grew up the same way. In fact, I remember going to visit my grandfather down here in Miami when we lived in New York, and yeah, he used to lick his plate because you know he grew up during the Depression, and that was always encouraged on us. Like, make sure you had to finish your plate, sit at your table. And I remember like even foods that I didn't hate. It's probably one of the reasons I hate things like tuna fish because it was like one of those things you were forced to eat and you didn't like it as a kid. Non-negotiable. And it was non-negotiable. So, and I think that we used to do that to our kids. I'm, like now I look back, I wish we didn't do that. But yeah, Jen, thank you so much. And to all of you, thank you for sharing because like she's saying, you don't know what part of your journey is going to inspire somebody else. The, the, the little thing that you think is nothing is huge to somebody else. Well, and it may be the aha moment with, mm -hmm. for them. It may be the, the thing that turns the light bulb on and in some frustration when they're finally able to connect, this is what my problem is and this is how I need to move forward and handle it. Well, that is this week's Keto on the Couch. Again, Make sure you're a member of our Facebook family group. Leave some questions, some comments, things like that down below in the description of this video. We will read them on next week's Keto on the Couch. Please do us a favor, hit that like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week. Bye. bye.